Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. It's Friday, January the 22nd, 2021. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Glad you could join me. We're continuing on in the book of James with devotions in the book of James. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, our speech. The Bible has much to say to believers about how we should carry ourselves in the way that we speak. One of the major things that we have at our disposal is the ability to bless others with words of encouragement and also to praise God with the fruit of our lips. This being said, the Bible tells us that born-again believers that um, we have a new nature, but our old nature is still present and we wrestle against it. So we face temptations to speak evil. Now there's a struggle here as the sin nature vies for control over our tongues. And I think this is a struggle that each prob- probably each one of us is very familiar with. Now, when we yield to the pattern laid down by our sin nature, Romans chapter 3 speaks out, telling us where this leads. In the second half of verse 9, uh, Paul says, For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles are alike, all alike under the power of sin. As it is written in Romans 3:10-14, a little further on, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Well, it's quite an ominous description of the human tongue bound by the sin nature. So the the question is, how do we sidestep the sin nature's propensity to speak deceitfully with poison and the evil that comes out out of our soul through our mouths like an open grave? Not very pleasant. James says to us in chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, Those who consider themselves as religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. I'll stop short and read 27 in in a little bit. But Jesus did not save us just to keep us living according to the same old patterns of our old natures. And he did not leave us powerless at the mercy of our sin nature. God has given us his grace to overcome by giving us the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8, 12 to 14, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. So when it comes to controlling our speech, it's very important for us to yield to the person of the Holy Spirit inside. If we're truly believers, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And James, in actuality expresses a litmus test for people to test whether they actually truly believe or not. If we're only religious without God being alive inside of us, we will rely solely upon human wisdom and willpower to help us to make good decisions. In this case, we're doomed. We're doomed to failure because our sin nature has the poison of vipers on our lips. No person alive escapes this fact. I've heard people say, well, you know, I thank God because uh, He'll accept me just if I do good and I try my very best. I, I think I'm, I'm a good person. I think God will, will, will let me into heaven because I do as best I can. Well, the truth of the matter is without, without the work of Jesus Christ in and through our lives, 
Nobody is righteous, not, not even one. We can't hope to do what God would have us to do or follow His law on our own steam. Um, and this is why so many people who consider themselves as religious people, religious, are not actually even saved. Their tongues have poisonous speech coming out of them. And it reveals the state of their hearts. Such a person with that kind of religion deceives him or herself and the claim that they know God because there's no fruit. Their religion is absolutely worthless. Only the wisdom of heaven can change a heart. The wellspring of God's wisdom is like a flowing brook. And when the wellspring of a man's being is rooted in God's wisdom, it will flow from the words of the mouth. Jesus said in Matthew 7.16, You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. And this is why James says in verse 27, Religion, that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself by being polluted from the world. This kind of wisdom and this kind of religion can only come from the wellspring spring of God's fountain of wisdom. True wisdom of God is born from heaven and it finds its source from the love of God shining through us as we walk in step with the Holy Spirit. God accepts those who have a pure heart and the only way that we can have a pure heart, friends, is if we ask Jesus Christ to cleanse us from our sins and take away our iniquities. That's the only way. And when we truly have Jesus as the ruler of our heart, what comes of our, of our speech will become sweet. And not only that, but our actions, what we do with our hands, will be sweet we'll be more concerned with other people and helping other people in their distress than we will about ourselves. And we will want to please God with everything that we are and keep ourselves from the unholiness that is so prevalent in today's world. If you love me, Jesus said, you will do what I say. You'll obey my commandments. The Holy Spirit fills us with God's love. And as we yield to the love of God, our speech will be pure along with our actions. If our love is waxing cold, maybe we need to ask God to renew our hearts, to soften our hearts, and to help us to return back to our first love. This is food for thought.